So I was born in Elmhurst, Queens. Uh, my parents were uh, political exile from Haiti. And um, I spent part of my first year um, in Haiti. Actually, I had gone to visit uh, my grandmother uh, when um, my mom's brother basically disappeared. So we had to go into hiding. And um, so uh, that was kind of set up the tone a little bit for the rest of my childhood, which was spent pretty much going back and forth. So I attended, I spent the school year in Haiti, and then I would come and visit my parents who couldn't travel uh, in the summer. Um, fast forward college, I went to Queens College for a bachelor in fine arts, and then I went to the School of Visual Arts for a master's degree. I think that early on what really um, really stood out for me was trying to articulate uh, a language uh, in the work. Um, I was interested in imagery uh, right away. I never had to look for subject matter. Um, in college, I was really taken uh, by Jasper John's painting, and I think it's because um, he used images. Images seem to be signifiers or symbolic more than explicit in his work. Uh, even when literally you cannot tell what the image stands for. Um, so that was my introduction to image making somehow. John was like, wow, I could include, because my professors were uh, abstract expressionists before that. So John was my introduction to subject matter and to content in an interesting way. Um, so uh, pretty much I was interested in how to develop a language um, to, uh, that encompass both my experience living between places uh, and that could reflect a diasporic uh, identity, so to speak. I think that probably the, the biggest challenge that any artist face is um, continuity uh, and to sustain a practice. And I've been pretty lucky that I've sustained uh, my practice pretty continuously for quite some years right now. Um, I had an early challenge with materials because I was trained as an oil painter and I became allergic to solvent basically and to uh, oil pigments basically, which is how I started diving in uh, mixed media pieces. Um, so my first challenge was finding a language to articulate my work which is how I started into integ integrating um, collage elements and vinyl and plastic and India ink, as well as acrylic um, uh, into the work. Not counting beads and sequins, of course. <laughs> I think that for a long time, um, I didn't maybe realize that I was having a diasporic experience growing up. <laughs> Um, but it certainly was pointing out to me uh, as soon as I started college because people certainly were asking me where I'm from. <laughs> um, and saying that you're from Queens just didn't satisfy <laughs> the answer. So the important, so for me, I see a, quite a continuum and a fluidity between my experiences. And I was interested in uh, creating pieces that express, open a space for that fluidity of references. Um, so that's one part of it. The other part also is that um, I am a storyteller in my work and um, I really did not want to um, give up um, those memories, those stories, that iconography that I found very interesting. Um, when I started, uh, when I came of age, so to speak, as an artist after grad school, there was, there was not a discourse to really express a Caribbean or a Latin American uh, identity in art. So that language um, had to be created, so to speak. So I think that myself, as well as my peers, we spent the first part of our career pretty much crafting a language uh, to express that. Um, you know, if you were a black woman, then, you know, black, you know, was kind of a blanket uh, statement. And while that is part of my experience and part of what I um, 
Part of my references, you know, are so what you could call uh, African-American iconography, whether they're black eyed peas or color green. So that's certainly part of the iconography that I'm interested in. But it is also a more complex uh, identity, which is, uh, you know, different uh, than being African-American. So part of uh, that early part of my career was spent very much crafting uh, more complex language, as well as several peers, you know, working in the same area. One of my colleague, a longtime colleague who's written extensively at my work about my work is Jerry Philogene. Uh, and I remember having a discussion with uh, Jerry in the mid 90s and saying that, you know, the minute someone wants to talk about my work, they do not, they're not talking about art anymore. We're going in sociology, ethnological references, we're going to Maya Deren, and it's not a discourse about art. And I remember Jerry telling me she was at NYU getting her PhD, and she's like, hang on, hang on. I'm coming with the discourse. I'm almost done. A couple more years, I'll be done. But literally, uh, now, I mean, I'm thrilled by, you know, the, the departments that we have, by how many curators, and a lot of women, actually, who have developed that knowledge and that field. Um, so it's great to have seen that development happen. Well, I'm a storyteller, so I always have a story to tell. <laughs> that comes so naturally from just very simple memories to songs to a tale that was accidentally told to um, an image I saw somewhere in Carnival. Uh, part of the going back and forth is that I think that when I would go to Haiti, I saw things partly um, with a foreign eyes, you know, um, so that things would stick out and I would be like, wow, this is so cool. We don't have this in New York, <laughs> you know? And um, so it's as if I had stored, I have stored a lot of images. Uh, and uh, so I have that bank of images and of stories and narratives that um, come out in the work. <laughs> right now, I just finished wrapping up a very long series uh, of pieces, The Pantheon, which is a series that I started um, while I was an artist in residence at the Studio Museum in Harlem quite a while back. Um, it's my third version and the most complete version, which I just finished printing. Uh, at Coronado Print Studio. It's a 21-piece uh, Pentagon with uh, 21 print portfolios presented in a cigar box. So I'm wrapping that up. It's a very long-term project that I'm thrilled to finish. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. It's great working on it, but it's even greater to wrap it up. And then I started painting. So um, thrilled to be painting again. Right now, I'm very interested in what I'm working on. Um, I'm immersed in the language of paint and uh, mixed media pieces, um, but I'm working on canvas and I'm re-engaging with the language of paint. Um, after my allergies to paint, uh, to oil paint, uh, acrylics somehow didn't do the trick for me uh, or the acrylics we had at the time. And I love working with the fluid acrylics right now. Um, but I'm coming to it also with all the experience I've acquired with the mixed media pieces, which is making it very exciting. Um, so I just embark on a very large series of pieces on linen. Um, and uh, right now, that conversation with myself is my dream. <laughs> and those pieces. The series is called Old World, New World. So I traveled to Greece last summer and I snap as usual, I snap a, an incredible amount of picture. I shouldn't say as usual because I'm not usually taken by everything, but I was really taken by some of the old runes and the walls, the, the stone walls. So I came back with a huge amount of images of stone walls and some of the imagery and the mythology from the Pantheon series are blended with there as the new world and old world. Um, so. Well, the first thing you have to do is create a studio practice. Uh, and, um, and that's the most important thing, to create reg regular hours um, and a consistent studio practice 
that is totally anchored in your life and your daily life. Not a once in a while thing, but an absolute part of your life. And I think that's the most important thing. Once you have a studio practice and you have developed studio, strong studio habits, you could take it anywhere. It's a challenge um, and um, you try to do it fluidly. I tend to do a paperwork uh, early in the morning because once I get into this workspace in the studio, I do not want to go back and forth. I also have some help at this point in the studio, which makes it um, allows my time to stretch a bit more so I could focus more on the artwork. I think the big thing for uh, aspiring uh, artists is to really work and work smartly, but you do have to work. I think that I could say that on a good day, if you could get six hours of pure creation at a high level, uh, that's a solid day and then several other hours could be used for prep for other things for drawing and for doing other things but if I could just be at the highest level for six hours continuously I'm thrilled